everybody! Today I'm going to be recommending some books that will make you smile. It's a crazy time. <laughs> Biggest understatement of the century. Um, I'm not even gonna go into everything that is going on because there are so many things. But because of that, I like to read books sometimes to make me feel happy and to make me feel like I can just escape my reality for a little while. I think that's a super valid reason to read, just to escape. Um, so I have a very eclectic, strange pile of books here, but these are all books that made me really happy, made me smile, or made me laugh. Um, and I really recommend these books if you yourself are feeling really overwhelmed and just want a way to read something nice. <laughs> just just something nice, damn it. <laughs> so in no particular order, let's get started. Let's, I don't even know where to begin. This really is a very strange pile. I'm gonna start with this one. The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel um, about a dressmaker. That both of the characters seem to be like 20 years old or something. Um, the, a dressmaker who gets hired by the prince of her um, you kind of get this vibe that they're living. I, it probably says it. It probably says it. Paris. Paris. The Prince of Paris. <laughs> no. The Prince of France um, has hired this dressmaker to make him dresses because he dresses in drag and will then go to parties and events dressed um, in drag. And so it's about this really beautiful relationship that um, builds between these two friends and about identity and it is so touching. It's very heartwarming. The colors are very comforting and the end is very beautiful. Um, okay, on to the next one. Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Buck. I'm telling you, we, this is a weird pile of books, but they will make you smile, so <laughs> that's okay. Jonathan Livingston Siegel is a book about a seagull whose name is Jonathan Livingston, who is a real outcast in his seagull community. It's um, a very unique book in that it has a lot of photographs of seagulls um, throughout it. It's very beautiful. Um, and it's kind of like a moral tale, sort of. It's kind of like a fable because it is about these seagulls and, and about being an outcast and, and the ending is very heartwarming. It is a, like it kind of goes through a bit of a sad part, but it really lifts into this really beautiful ending. Um, and that's just a very beautiful book that I don't see a lot of people talking about. All right, next up, Stardust by Neil Gaiman. So I just rewatched the movie for Stardust um, like a week ago. And it's one of my all time favorite movies. I've probably seen that movie like 20 times. And it just really reminded me of how fun the book is. The book is a lot less family friendly than the movie. I love the movie, but the movie is very much like made for kids and um, very PG. But the book is just like the movie, very fun. It's very magical, mystical, quirky, weird in the way that Neil Gaiman creates these otherworldly, um, imagina imaginative, like, dreamscapes. You have these two adventurers, a star and a young boy with, with nothing but a bit of destiny going on this epic quest and meeting all these different people. And it's just a lot of fun in that very escapist fantasy way. Um, and I think that if you really like the movie, you'd be interested to read the book because it has some alterations. Okay, next up. This is a very different one. Nonfiction. Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. So this is one of those... I'm not very good at reading inspirational books, but this is one of those inspirational type books that I actually really connected to. It is a book about being creative, about... Um, it's also very beautifully illustrated and um, designed. Graphic design is really good and key in this. But it's about basically taking yourself seriously as an artist and a person who is creative and sharing your work and feeling like, why is it important that I share what I make and, and that I make in the first place? So if, you know, throughout this difficult time, you found your creativity has fallen away or you feel doubtful about your creativity, I think this would be a really good book to, to re-inspire you and, and give you that passion back. Um, okay, what will I pick? This is such a strange pile. This book is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling. So this book is quite old now. When did it come out? I mean, it's not old. It's just not topical, especially because she has a newer memoir that's very similar to this one that has come out more recently. But this book is very cute. 
if you are the kind of person, 2011, wow, that's longer ago than I thought. Um, if you're the kind of person who enjoys reading celebrity memoirs and you enjoy reading this kind of light, fluffy nonfiction, I really recommend this. Mindy Kaling is super funny. She's really hilarious. Um, and this book is really quirky and cute. And it's just kind of, it made me laugh and it made me smile. And that's the whole point of this book recommendation. So there you go. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's go to this one. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. So this one is slightly controversial. I think this is the most controversial one on this list in terms of will it make you smile? I'm not sure. I think it will because it made me smile, but it doesn't make me smile in kind of the laughing fun summary way. This is a book about a, a circus that appears overnight in different towns. Um, and so we're in this t small town. I forgot the name of the town. Um, like the, the, the first line of the bio is, or the synopsis is, the circus arrives without warning. So we're in this small town and suddenly the circus arrives and it kind of changes the scope of the town for a while. And you're learning about this, um, you know, all the people who work in the circus and stuff. It's very magical and mystical, similar, I guess, to Stardust in that way. But it, it's so dreamy. It is so dreamy. It's a little sad. It's a little kind of melancholy, but in that kind of wistful way that it, yes, it's a little sad, but in a nice way. I think also if you're looking for escapism, this might be a really beautiful world to escape to. Okay. Next up, let's go with one that's for sure really happy. <laughs> controversial. The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories by Tim Burton. So this is a collection of poetry with some accompanying illustrations by Tim Burton, the director of, you know, Edward Scissorhands. Um, and it is so funny. Like this is one of the funniest. <laughs> it's gruesome. It's gruesome. I will say that. Like this is one of my favorite ones. It is called The Boy with Nails in His Eyes. The boy with nails in his eyes put up his aluminum tree. It looked pretty strange because he couldn't really see. <laughs> like, it's gruesome in the Tim Burton way that everything he kind of makes is kind of spooky and messed up. But it's funny. They're, they're, um... They are that kind of rhymy, limerick style poem and the illustrations that accompany them are all very grotesque and macabre. But if that's the kind of thing that you find funny or can find funny, I really recommend this one because it will definitely make you chuckle. Um, okay, and, and in a very similar vein is Love Sick by Jesse Cave. So this is more of a, it's like a happy version. I mean, can could it be more contrasting? It's like a happy version of the same sort of thing. So. Jessie Cave um, was the actress who was Lavender Brown in the Harry Potter movies. Um, and so she does these doodles and she posts them on Instagram too. So you could check out her Instagram and see if you like that style and if you find them funny. And if so, I really recommend her book. But yeah, she does these doodles that are kind of like hashtag relevant or um, they're really, really funny. They're really funny. They're very heartwarming. They're sometimes a little depressing in that self-deprecating way where you're kind of like looking at your flaws and finding them a little hilarious when you try to be objective about them. So this is a really funny, cute, funny little one. Um, I do recommend that a lot. Okay, now let's do this one. Grapefruit by Yoko Ono. <laughs> Really, I think this is the strangest list of books I've ever recommended in my life. But this is a really interesting book. This it's the subtext is a book of instruction and drawings by Yoko Ono. Introduction by John Lennon. That's cool. Um, so I actually haven't read this cover to cover. I've more flipped through it and um, just read random things. It looks like poetry. But what it is, is these instructions. This was kind of like a long going project that Yoko Ono has where she gives you instructions. And they're so, there's, so, I hate dust jackets. They're so provocative and they are full of so much whimsy and like childlike wonder that they do make you smile and they make you think and they make you stop and just take a deep breath. Let me try and find a good one. This one is called Cloud Peace. Imagine the clouds dripping. Dig a hole in your garden to put them in. Or this one is Clock Peace. Make all the clocks in the world fast by two seconds without letting anyone know about it. Sun Peace. Watch the sun until it becomes square. Map Peace. 
draw a map to get lost. There are all these kind of, there are instructions on things to do and either you can just read them and imagine yourself doing them and what that would actually look like or you can try and do them. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird, fun kind of exercise to imagine these. Shadow piece. Put your shadows together until they become one. Cut piece. Throw it off a high building. Like, it's just really imaginative and it, a city piece. Step in all the puddles in the city. I just really love this this concept and it's a lot of fun. So I think this one will make you smile. And then, okay, the next four books that I have for you are four of my favorite books of all time. These are books that I really recommend, um, all for very different reasons. But let's start here. Sheets by Brenna Thumler. I've talked a lot about this book on my channels. I absolutely adore this. This is another graphic novel. It's about a girl mom named Marjorie whose mother has passed away and is now trying to run her family's laundrette um, to the best of her ability. Is it only at Canadians that call it a laundrette? Oh, right. Laundromat. <laughs> it says laundromat. Okay. At the same time, there's this ghost named Wendell who I'm obsessed with. He's my best friend. <laughs> and... Um, Wendell has passed away and he's living in the land of the ghosts and he comes and he finds her laundromat because he's a sheet. He's a ghost and like sheets go to the laundromat and he sees other sheets there. Um, and it's this, it's this really touching story of these two characters who are very lost and are feeling very invisible and how their friendship makes them feel seen. And it's very touching. The illustrations will make you smile because it's just so beautiful. Wendell especially will really make you smile because he's such a sweet boy. Um, but yeah, there's, it's just one of the most beautiful things I've ever read and I super recommend it. Um, okay, then I have this book called 15 by Beverly Cleary. I show it sideways because it doesn't have its dust jacket. Um, this is... Uh, I don't recommend this book very often because I don't really know exactly who would like it, but I had to put it in this video because this this book makes me smile so, so much. So this book was published in 1956. It's... Oh, it's beautiful. It's the story of a girl who's 15 years old in the 50s and it's like her first boyfriend. The story is so pure. It's so innocent. Like the climactic scene is like when she goes to a Chinese restaurant or when she's not too sure if that boy actually likes her or not. It's like that kind of book. It's so sickly sweet that I know a lot of people might not like it, but there are some of you out there who are looking for that retro, fun, just super sweet story. If you've seen the movie Flipped, which I don't know that many people that have seen it, but if you've seen Flipped and you liked it, I love that movie, it's so, so sweet. If you like that, this book. You have to check it out. 15 by Beverly Cleary. Okay, I've got two more for you. Let's go to George Orwell. Oh, my man. So this is Keep the Aspidist or Flying by George Orwell. George Orwell is my favorite author. I'm absolutely obsessed with the guy. Um, my favorite book by him. Oh, look, a bookmark. Oh, what a beautiful bookmark. <laughs> um, my absolute favorite book by him is Animal Farm. Animal Farm is not the book to read if you want to smile. <laughs> Neither is 1984. Avoid them right now. But there is always time for George Orwell. And Keep the Aspidister Flying is really interesting, but also quite funny. Actually, that reminds me. Gosh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double rock recommend this book too. God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Look at how this this is just a disaster. <laughs> Don't, let's not talk about that. So this, um, let me go back to this one. Keep the Aspidister Flying is about this man who b doesn't want to make money anymore. He believes that money is the worst, that our lives have been ruined by money, by the constant pursuit of money. And so he's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not gonna participate in this whole capitalist thing anymore. And it's kind of about how that doesn't work because I'm sorry, but we live in capitalism. So you gotta make some money. And it's funny because you kind of see how it just kind of fails, but it's also heartwarming and will make you smile beca because it's funny, but also because it has a, a positive ending, which is rare for my men or well. So I really recommend this one. It's very thought provoking. If you're looking for something that will make you smile and make you think and isn't just like really light and silly, this one. But then this one, there, I actually think of these definitely in the same category. I guess because they're both about money 
and maybe because they're both blue. <laughs> but um, God Bless Me, Mr. Rosewater is about our main man, Elliot. I think that's his name, right? Uh, yes, Elliot Rosewater. And he is super rich because of inheritance. His family has just always been very, not always, but has for many generations been very, very wealthy because of a, of a giant corporation company type thing. Um, when is this book? When was this published? The book takes place in the 60s. Um, this book, 1936, is when it was first published. So, long time ago. But anyway, this book is about this guy who's fabulously rich and he realizes something that no one else in his family has ever realized. And it's that they should be using their money to help. But the problem is he doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't know what to do with his money in to make it like actually affect other people positively. And there's so much discourse going on right now about the concept of billionaires, like everyone talking about Jeff Bezos, he could be saving um, the world and instead he's not and should billionaires exist? And is there such thing as too much money? Um, so if you're interested in thinking about money and, and how money has worked throughout human history. These are two books that I'd really recommend checking out. And this one is so funny. I like really laughed a lot. I actually made a podcast episode all about this. So I'll link that down below if you want to know more about that boy. But uh, both of these are really interesting, quite funny in a, in a satirical way. Um, okay, and my last book, I can't believe we're ending here, but this is one of my favorite books. I absolutely adore this book. But I recognize it's not for everyone. But it is Fly on the Wall by E. Lockhart. So E. Lockhart, better known for We Were Liars and um, what's the name of that Frankie Lando Banks book. Um, she's got like quite a few books that have done really well. I wish that this one had blown up in the same way that the other ones had. I randomly found this book, you know, like at chapters or something once and I bought it probably just because it was pink and I was young. And this book to me is the funniest YA book out there. And I've had some friends read it and they like reply to me and they're like, oh my god, Ariel, I'm so glad you made me read that. That was so funny. And then I've had other friends read it and they're like, it was funny, but like not hilarious. So obviously comedy is just up to the beholder. Everyone has a different taste and style of it. But this book to me is hilarious. It's about this girl who it's a, it is an adaptation of Kafka's Metamorphosis. Um, it's about a girl who one day she's at high school. She feels really left out of like boys. Like she's like, what are boys? I wish that I could be a fly on the wall of the boys locker room to kind of get what the heck they're talking about all the time. And the next day she wakes up and she is, she's a fly in her high school and she's observing men in, in the locker room. And it's weird. It's super weird. And it's very bizarre and strange in, a similar way to like, you know, it's weird to in Metamorphosis when the main character wakes up as a giant cockroach, it's weird to wake up as a fly. But um, it's also about this character, this, this main character, her name is Gretchen. She goes to this art school. And so she's kind of learning about herself and her art and like trying to understand other people's perspectives and changing from being kind of a snotty, mean person to someone who recognizes that everyone is living their own battles. It's very interesting and it's very funny in my opinion. So gosh, okay, we did it. These are all the books I recommend that you read if you want to smile. I mean, I guess I don't recommend, you don't have to read all of them in order to smile, but maybe one of these, <laughs> but maybe one of these will help you smile during these dangerously dark times. So I can't balance that for much longer. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear if you're thinking about picking up any of these books or if you have a book to recommend me and everyone else watching this video for a book that will make us smile. I think we all need it right now. If you're interested in getting one of these books, I'll have an affiliate link down below if you use it. You pay the same amount of money, but then I get a little support for my channel. I also really wanna thank my patrons for supporting my channel and everything I do, especially during COVID. It's amazing to have you guys. So if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, <laughs> I'll link that down below too. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that the rest of your day is okay. Bye.